Hey fam, how are you doing? Welcome or welcome back. It's your girl Rita and I'm thrilled to have you here today. If this is your first time, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Check out my other videos. Drop your girl a comment. Hit the subscribe icon and hit the bell icon so that you're notified whenever I have a new video out. I am going to be starting a series. This series is basically about how herbs have transformed the life of my hair. As you can see, my hair is thriving. Oh, by the way, I'm about to get a trim and i think i have just touched this out of shape but whatever the case may be <laughs> okay so yeah my hair is thriving and i'm going to be telling you about how that has happened and how herbs have helped me in my hair journey so if that's something you want to learn about stick around and go nowhere like i said it's a series i am starting so this is the first of the series there are going to be other um content and videos to support this series so watch out for that before we head into today's video let's talk about money and finances if you know me then you know that i am pro financial independence and literally every economy is drinking currently so let's address this we spend money every single day but how many of us make money every single day right so that's the purpose for this short clip i'm going to be giving you three passive income ideas that you can leverage on to help you make the most of this dwindling economy the first one is freelancing you can literally become a freelancer whatever skill you have you can basically sell it give the services to someone who needs it and get paid for it now to succeed as a freelancer you need to learn some high income paying skills you learn the skills and then you market yourself correctly to the right people making the most of it and getting paid for it freelancers make a lot of money i promise you there are a few platforms that you can leverage on we have fiverr we have upwork and when i say learn high income skill i mean learn high income skills like copywriting ghostwriting content writing name it there are a ton of them i'm going to be putting links in the description box so feel free to make your research and whichever one suits you the most choose that learn it and then you market yourself i mentioned two platforms fiverr and upwork for you to get the best clients on fiverr and upwork you need to boost your profile and become one of the top ranking searches. How do you do that? I'm going to put a link in the description box as well. Check that out, optimize your profile, and I wish you the very best. The second method I'm going to be talking about today is affiliate marketing. If you don't know what affiliate marketing is, it's basically marketing someone else's product, either a physical product or a digital product, selling it, and then receiving commission for each sale. Now you can do this with different platforms, but before you do this, you need to learn what it is. You need to understand how it works so that you can give it your utmost best. I'm going to put a link in the description box as well for that. The third option is for you to partner with an organization that empowers individuals to start up their own businesses. I know one in Nigeria, I am a partner with them and that's C21FG International. Partnering with this organization means that you're going to be receiving mentorship to hold your hand, help you to start a business and mentor you through it so that you are successful in that business until you get to your goal. So to do this, I'm going to put a link also in the description box. You indicate your interest. Their selection process is kind of, you know, strict. However, once you're selected to become a partner with them, you are guaranteed to succeed as long as you follow through with your mentorship. And they also have mentors that are international like Eric Worre, Mark Morris and the likes trust me this is an amazing one so if you are especially in africa and nigeria you really want to consider that option so all these options work for you wherever you are all you have to do is to lay down learn it and then get to work so whether you're a student or you have a regular job and you're looking for something extra on the side or you're a stay-at-home mom and you need a source of income all these methods are fantastic fingers crossed it'll work out for you perfectly i wish you the very best and i hope that we all can get to a place of financial independence without any further ado let me get straight into this video so before i get into that i want to talk about hair porosity in one of my videos which i am going to look for and put a link 
up and in the description box i talked extensively about hair different types of hair components of hair how to determine your hair type your hair texture your hair porosity everything now we have three different types of hair porosity there is high there is medium and then there's low porosity and um the reason why i want to talk about this is so that you understand the extent to which my hair has changed it is very important to know the porosity of your hair even if you don't know any other thing about hair or your own hair know your porosity because it is going to guide you on what and what you should be doing to your hair how you should be taking care of your hair what you should be looking out for the dangers you know what your hair is prone to what your hair is looking for basically porosity changes the game if you go back in time to when i started my channel i was basically using just top bought products i already knew my hair porosity at that time so i was able to get products that were perfect for my hair type and that transformed the life of my hair so it's a steady journey i'm still going through it but i started with stubble products and then i drifted into herbs but trust me if you don't know the porosity of your hair you will not know what kind of products you should be using for your hair and then your hair is just going to be suffering when i didn't know the porosity of my hair and i didn't know how to take care of my hair based on the porosity i was doing so many different things that led to hair damage I mean, look at the picture of my before and look at me now. You see what I'm talking about, right? So you got to know your hair porosity. And I've seen a lot of influencers or maybe not influencers, just people sharing their opinion on TikTok and say, you don't need to know your hair porosity. You can listen to them or you can listen to us you choose so basically high porosity means your hair cuticles are lifted up and anything can go in anything can go out so it is easy for your hair to actually absorb moisture low porosity means the cuticles of your hair are laid flat down it is difficult for anything to go in and difficult for anything to go out okay so um low porosity oftentimes is actually tougher than high porosity high porosity you are prone to damage you're prone to heat damage of photo damage every kind of damage you, you are prone to hydro fatigue that's excess moisture you're just you're prone to everything but low porosity is a more resistant kind of hair and your focus is going to be moisture why high porosity your focus is going to be to give that hair the strength that it needs to thrive so there are two different things and if you don't know you're just going to be doing zigzag zigzag and it's going to take a toll on your hair so know your hair porosity please to do that is really really simple how um fast does your hair absorb moisture or water in the first two minutes high porosity more than two minutes or two minutes and above medium anything that extends to like five minutes or your hair just doesn't absorb the moisture you just keep pouring the water and it just keeps like passing through it doesn't really get into your hair low porosity and um you can check that in my last wash day video because my hair is now low porosity hair so you can check that as what low porosity hair looks like so just to guide you on that okay so i've talked about hair porosity i've talked about the products you should be looking out for so if you have high porosity hair you look out for strengthening products and if you go back in time to my videos you will also see that um i was using there was this sheer moisture strengthen and restore living conditioner i was using i was also using um mega growth uh, strengthening deep conditioner so when you have high porosity hair those are the kind of products you should be looking for strengthening products but when you have low porosity hair you'll be looking for moisturizing products like now that my hair is on the low porosity side i use anti jackie um anti jackie's moisturizing deep conditioner i think that's it yeah so that's what i use now because the porosity of my hair has changed so you really want to know your hair porosity it will guide you and it'll help you know what kind of products to look out for if you have high porosity strengthening if you have low porosity city moisturizing if you are in between just enjoy yourself <laughs> okay so another thing is if you have high porosity hair you want to stay away from heat you want to stay away from washing your hair with warm water you just want to stay away from things like that and if you have low porosity hair then you really want to include heat in your routine wash your hair with warm water you can um, steam your hair you can deep condition with heat whatever it is just make sure you include that don't do don't um, overdo it so that um, it doesn't lift up the cuticles of your hair but you really need to work with heat to a minimal level so that you can get the moisture into your hair 
so yes i think i have covered porosity so let's uh that is going to help you actually in the videos that i'm about to release and in the series so watch out for that now let's talk about why i started using herbs in my hair at the time that i started um taking care of my hair um my hair like i said was highly porous it was damaged from heat it was thin super fine the density of my scalp was really 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 low um i was suffering from serious dandruff and scalp issues so i got reading and researching i am a public health professional so i already knew that um herbs play a vital part in medicine so i started to look for a, a herb that could potentially get rid of dandruff because i had tried every kind of store-bought product i could find and it just didn't work for the dandruff so i found neem which is a great herb by the way and it really helped me to get rid of that dandruff even though it had a lot of side effects i'm not going into that in this video i found neem and it was so effective i used it i enjoyed it i started to learn about how you can um, get herbs to suit your hair type and how to include it in your routine how to use it in your hair and stuff like that so i started gradually i started by infusing these herbs into oils and then i started to include other herbs i looked for herbs that were perfect for my hair and i started to work on that gradually i i started with mixing it with my um deep conditioner if you go back in time to when i first started my um youtube channel you will actually see that so i started using it in my deep conditioners first like bananas um mayonnaise and stuff like that and gradually i drifted from using complete store-bought products on my hair to using herbs plus double products so i still combine both and um herbs play a huge part it is basically like 90 percent of what i do to my hair now so that's how i started to use herbs in my hair i also came across a couple of youtubers that testified to the fact that they were using herbs in their hair and the difference was massive also there are studies scientific studies that show that um herbs actually help to increase um scalp density get your hair to be longer and stuff like that so boom i just got into it and i started to use it another reason why i actually subscribed to it is because um store products don't really have a lasting effect on your hair so take for instance while i was using that strengthening and restore living conditioner it is amazing i'm telling you guys like it changed it started to transform my hair literally but um once i wash my hair all the effects washes off so i have to reapply unlike herbs once you start using herbs in your hair most of the herbs the effects are long lasting or some of them especially herbs like henna so henna is one of the herbs that just sits there the more you apply the more it functions and stays there and it's difficult to wash off it doesn't like wash off like stop or product so that's another thing for me there was no particular product that could help me get rid of dandruff there was no stop products or stop or product that could help my hair to um, grow or help me to retain length so i was looking for alternatives and things that would actually do that for my hair and i found that in herbs stop up products are great if you don't have time for herbs if you don't have the patience for herbs if you don't have the time to sit down and mix those or you don't like the smell stop up products are great they work as long as you know your porosity and you look for the appropriate stubble product however the effects are not lasting so you will have to continue to go and all of that everything is consistency don't get me wrong but um for the effect of stubble product it is really really minimal so and i wanted something boom shaka shaka <laughs> so and i found that in herbs so yes if you've been with me since i started my journey then you already know like you can you can see it here like it's just like it's obvious right now like it's just obvious and forget shrinkage shrinkage is a freaking 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 bitch like i can see the hair it's just like shrinking and going All of this is because of the herbs that i've been using i'm going to tell you that for sure for sure my hair now thrives better than it used to when i was using stubble products when i was using stubble products my hair was highly porous it was still highly porous even while i was using the strengthening um product it was still highly porous but i was able to take care of it and manage it and the products were helping my hair to do better however because my hair was highly porous i would have to re-moisturize like two to three times in a week 
very very important because as I did moisturize the hair <laughs> oh my god I just got into pigeon so as I am moisturizing the hair literally the hair is drying out and it's not like low porosity hair that the products will dry but then it still feels moisturized as long as you were able to get that moisture into your hair with low porosity hair no it's high porosity hair so as it's getting dried it's like drying out because it means that the product literally are already drying out of your hair so that was really difficult for me I would have to re-moisturize two to three times in a week now in a whole week i probably won't even re-moisturize my hair i'm telling you <laughs> like herbs are just like a lifesaver for me make everything so easy i don't spend so much time on my hair like i used to mm -mm, absolutely not like no it's not like mm, i'm just resting i'm chilling I'm, I'm chilling with this hair right now just chilling <laughs> and it's all because of the hair so i'm talking about herbs and stuff but let's talk about how to use I mentioned earlier that I would always infuse into oils so I started with infusing these herbs into oils yes you can use the fresh ones you can use the dried um, herbs you can use the powdered herbs whatever it is that you lay your hands on trust me it will be effective it is always effective so you can infuse into oils you can boil strain and then use as a hair spritz or hair spray you can use it as a leave-in now I'm careful about saying that because if you are using the tea, you definitely still want to apply some leave-in products, either leave-in conditioner, butters, oils, whatever it is. You you know you are using either the LCO or the LOC method, whatever it is, you can use it as a leave-in. So sometimes when I wash my hair, even after doing like a mask, if I do a straightening mask, I might do a moisturizing tea spray it into my hair and then apply my leave-in and oils and just let it you know dry with my hair so that's what i mean by a leave-in there are some herbs that you can use as leave-in conditioners things like flax seeds um ambunu i tried ambunu recently it's also a great leave-in um but you always follow with a little bit of oil okay to seal the moisture in so that is a, you can there are some that you can use as leave-in and there are some that they're just teas and you've got to apply some sort of leave-in to it then you can infuse into oils use it on your oil it is perfect for the scalp trust me these herbs work wonders on your scalp whether you're using it as a tea or oil please apply it to your scalp because it is amazing for your scalp it changes your scalp completely okay so yes those are some things you can do you can also do a hair mask if you've been here then you see me do a hair mask or a hair gloss a gloss just has oil and um the mask is just pure herbs okay when you mix your herbs or oils they actually tone down the effectiveness of the herbs all right so just take note of that and that's why i do it interchangeably so i do a mask in my first wash day in my next wash day i'm doing a gloss and then i do a mask and then a gloss just like that you can also put this in your deep conditioners okay so um, that's something you can also work with especially if you're just starting out you don't want to just like boom shaka shaka <laughs> out of the blue overwhelm your hair so you start out by you know trying it in your deep conditioner see how it goes and it will also help you know which herbs are perfect for your hair so that's something to take note of you can mix them with your deep conditioners do a hair tea or spritz um mask gloss infuse into your oils whatever the case may be they are always always effective so the things you should note while you um, start to use herbs in your hair your hair is going to change drastically i mean it's obvious right see the density of my hair my hair has never been this thick like never been this thick so your hair is going to change definitely it'll be longer my hair is almost waistline long so it will be longer it'll be thicker it'll be fuller my strands are also not as fine as they used to be my hair used to be so fine like a strand is almost invincible but now like you can see it's somewhat thick then you have new growths sprouting like new growths always 
I always have new growth sprouting. That's normal with hair, but the occurrence is now more than it used to be because the density of my scalp again has changed. So your hair is going to change. My hair was also highly porous. Now it's on the low porosity side, all because of the herbs. Like I said, henna alone is just one that transforms your life completely because it goes into the cuticles of your hair it lays there and completely it just like continues to create layers the more you use it's just creating layer upon layer upon layer so yes your hair would definitely change so you keep studying your hair keep giving it what it needs as you start your ayurvedic journey or using herbs in your hair by the way it's called ayurveda right ayurveda one thing that you must not miss is deep conditioning deep conditioning should be like a a, a routine don't, like don't miss deep conditioning for anything when i started my hair journey started taking care of my hair i would sometimes skip deep conditioning don't do that don't do that especially when you start using herbs in your hair look when you're using herbs in your hair just make sure you have a moisturizing deep conditioner in place so that you can um deep condition after whether you're doing um a hair gloss or a hair mask or whatever it is deep condition after and use a moisturizing deep conditioner especially if you're using strengthening herbs they're strengthening herbs they're moisturizing herbs depending on which one you're doing but if you're going to mix moisturizing deep conditioner is a must don't skip it now you can use other kinds of deep conditioners you can use honey honey is perfect it's a humectant so it absorbs moisture to your hair so you can use honey you can use um glycerin glycerin is another amazing um deep conditioner because it will go in and soften your hair bananas are great avocado is great they have those fatty acids those vitamins those nourishment that your hair needs um, mayo is fantastic if you're going to use mayo you want to mix it with some oils and maybe a little bit of honey or glycerin because mayo contains eggs so you really want to make it as moisturizing as it can be otherwise just get you a moisturizing deep conditioner from the store it's perfect for that purpose so yes those are that is a must do deep conditioning should like do not miss it for anything okay once you start using herbs in your hair deep condition just in case you're wondering if there are potential risks to using herbs in your hair i would say yes Apart from the fact that your hair is going to change and you will need to keep studying your hair over and over as it's changing, you get acclimatized with it and continue to give it what it needs, there are potential risks. Like the first time I used um, neem in my hair as a hair tea, I suffered hydro fatigue because I did not know how moisturizing neem was and my hair being highly porous at the time, just needed a little bit of moisture and I overwhelmed it with neem and gave it like so much moisture that my hair felt so invisible it felt like it felt like foam like soft sponge like like I don't even know how to classify it it was disappearing because hydro fatigue okay excess moisture and um, another thing is you are likely to overdo it especially with the strengthening herbs listen i understand the temptation especially if you have like highly porous hair you're starting with herbs and you really want to get it strengthened so you keep doing a mask every week you're going to overwhelm your hair okay so that balance is very necessary the balance between strength and moisture very necessary space out that's something you want to do you want to space out and that's why my wash day routines usually change it's either a mask or a gloss and if i'm doing a gloss today next time i'm doing a mask if i'm doing a mask today next time i'm doing a gloss just to give it that balance and then i do not use the same herbs every single time i'm having my wash day i change it either moisturizing or strengthening moisturizing or strengthening or mix both and then i do mask gloss mask gloss whatever it is so that is something you should take note of you can overdo it with the strength and you can overdo it with the moisture all right so you want to get that balance between these herbs and make sure that um it is exactly what your hair needs okay so yes there are potential risks but 
nothing too serious as long as you have that balance and you have a fantastic and a healthy routine you are good to go i think those are the things i really want to talk about in this video other things you should take note of number one your diet plays an important part in your hair journey so um i am going to share a quick story about myself i have battled anemia before and um that is why when i discovered herbs i went more for topical application okay and everything i try to do to my hair is more on the top topical side because i know that internally i still have a you know work to do however i have been watching my diet and your diet plays an important part in your routine so you want to take note of that um you want to eat as much protein as possible because your hair is protein so you want to consume more of proteins balanced diet of course but include uh, or increase protein intake in your diet you also want to consume fruits vegetables because they have those antioxidants they have those vitamins they have those nourishment that your body needs now your body is very very unique and special and it takes care of the most important parts before it now gives whatever is left to your hair your skin and your nails so those are the last parts that gets any kind of nourishment or nutrition from what you are eating so you want to consider that and then eat more or eat high quality foods so that you are taking care of yourself from the inside and then you can now talk of topical applications which will also help your hair to benefit your hair you want to do it both ways so that you are not just doing topical applications and then inside is a mess and then it's just like conflicting okay topical application is fantastic but you also want to take care of your diet it's very 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 important the importance of your diet cannot be overemphasized. <laughs> all right so you want to bear that in mind and do the needful another thing i'd like to talk about is your genetics okay genetics play a large role in your hair and your hair journey now i'm going to use myself for an example if you look closely at my videos especially when i first started my hairline was little a little distended than it is right now i'll never forget the spots because i would always massage it my hair was literally here my hairline was literally here and i had like a little bald spots around the edges here but my hairline was here all the way to the front just here and you can see now that it is extended and i have hair all the way here i have baby hairs and sometimes i feel like this um i call it arc i don't know what but sometimes i feel like it's going to join or conjoin to my eyebrows that i have to shave this part to keep that hairline visible but this is now before it was not so and um that i think i got that from my mom because she has a this Extended hairline and though my father's bloodline they do have like really full hair and it's their hair type that really really sometimes join to their eyebrows they have that kind of hair but on my mom's side they have edges wahala so <laughs> I think I was somewhere in between but now it is like all the way here it is full now with baby hairs all over and stuff like that density yeah so genetically this was not what my hair was supposed to be but because of the power of herbs it has been transformed so genetically you might have a specific kind of hair listen don't hate your hair okay just love it pamper it and give it what it needs yes herbs can change the life of your hair but you should identify with your hair and know what kind of hair you have based on your genetics okay it will also help in your hair journey so that you can notice the changes and celebrate your wins so something else you should take note of is rest rest and stress also play a vital part in your hair journey let me tell you okay if you start stressing about your hair right it's going to affect your body and when your body is all stressed up your hair is going to fall out <laughs> i know that sounds crazy but that's just like this cycle like it's a circle it just keeps going and going and going never ending cycle but once you take care of yourself 
and you have the rest the way you should you are eating well you're working out you're resting you're feeling great it the fact that you're reducing stress in your body reduces the effect of your stress on your hair because stress affects the hair what it does is it blocks um the scalp from inside it blocks the blood flow to your scalp from within when you are stressed and that causes your hair to actually fall because then it's going to move your hair to the telogen phase and the telogen phase is where your hair detaches from blood vessels that are supposed to be supplying your hair with nourishment so when that happens your hair falls out when that when your hair falls out you start having bald spots and you are suffering from hair loss and it's it starts to even stress you out the more and the more you stress out the more it falls off the more it sheds it's it's an unending circle and you really do not want that so find the time to rest get enough sleep uh rest sleep well eat well stay hydrated and work out and take time for yourself in between your days or your weeks to rest relax refresh and then restart okay that is very very important for your hair so if you are trying to achieve a goal with your hair rest is important you want to tone down on that stress as much as possible so that you can get the best of your hair um yeah i think i have spoken about all the necessary things i do not know much about hair supplements or stuff like that because i do not use any however i am open to trying a few or researching i, I don't know because stuff is these things are not approved by fda so they're not really tested there's no scientific proof there's no backing of any sort it just carries the tag hair skin and nails i don't know if it works never tried it before i'm open to trying so if you have any you want to recommend please go ahead i'll definitely try it i just do not know if it's going to work or even how to track the success of the supplement what i do is i eat well i work out i stay hydrated as much as i can because that could be difficult sometimes you know the weather plays a huge part and stuff like that but i try intentionally to stay hydrated and i feed well and i try to sleep well all of this just plays a huge part it's it's a big um it's interconnected <laughs> it's all connected so you just you don't want to just concentrate on topical care and then forget about your internal care no it's all connected so you really 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 want to take care of yourself we all know that hair plays a huge part in how confident we feel so yes i hope i have been able to give um, vital information in this video like I said this is the first of the series so I'm going to be talking about strengthening herbs I'm going to be talking about softening or moisturizing herbs that could help your hair so if you have high porosity hair low porosity hair you also watch out for the videos that will follow in this series because they are going to help you a whole lot if you want to mix the herbs you know which one you want to choose based on their characteristics and your properties and what they do for your hair and stuff like that so this series is going to be an amazing one I know already and it's going to make a difference in your life that said i have a free ebook so if you want it it's not for everybody uh okay as long as you're watching this video if you want the free ebook it's free i will put a link to it in the um description box feel free to check that out as well and i hope it helps you it's been a pleasure making this for you today thank you so much for watching um this is so exciting don't forget to give this video a thumbs up um hit the subscribe icon if you haven't and hit the bell icon so that you're notified whenever i have a new video out also for the series that are coming up you really want to stay up to date with that then um feel free to drop your girl a comment check out my other videos and just let me know where you are in your hair journey and what your goal is put that in the comment section I look forward to reading your comments and I'm going to be responding to all the comments. I'll try my best to respond to all the comments. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Until then, I remain Rita Ralph and you remain colorfully blessed. Bye.